The views and opinions expressed by the participants on this show are not necessarily those of Stewart Information Services Corporation, Stewart Title, or Stewart Insurance. Before you make any investment, you should seek the advice of your investment advisor or attorney. Whether you're a real estate broker, realtor, homeowner, buyer, or seller, everything matters when it comes to real estate. This is Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title. Stuart Title's Bill Napick and guests open the door to what really matters in owning, buying, and selling real estate. And now, Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title, brought to you by Stuart Insurance. Here to inform, entertain, and inspire, Bill Napick. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show, Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title. I am your host, Bill Napick. Thank you for joining us. Yes, another great show is ahead. We're going to talk on today's show to top real estate professionals, one in the Woodlands area, also in West Houston, Katie and Fulcher will talk to a money man with Sente Mortgage. In addition, our very own Chief Information Security Officer, his name is Gennady Vishnevetsky, and he's going to talk to us about working from home and some of the things that he's doing at Stewart Title to keep us all safe with cybersecurity and again, tips for working at home. And now our first guest, Keisha Johnson with Keller Williams. Keisha, welcome to the show. Thanks, Bill. Thank you so much for having me. Certainly everyone has heard of Keller Williams, but let's tell everyone the Keller Williams location you are that you are in and where you practice your real estate. So I am actually in the Keller Williams Premier Office. We're located at 22762 West Timer Parkway in Katy, Texas. Um, we are the agents in our office, and in particular myself, we do real estate in the Houston and all of the surrounding area. You are in the Wild West, some people would say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we are. Well, when we think of the Westheimer Parkway, and certainly a lot of people are very familiar with that area, but if they're not, some people hear the show outside of Houston. But it is, and I'm going to describe it a little bit, and you can pick up from there, it is kind of a newer area. And it is an area where, as Houston is growing in every direction, this is the kind of the direct west area of our sprawling Houston, Texas. Let's g give us a picture. It's just a, a, a very growing and very active area right now, right? Right. Yeah. So, Katie um, has, has been growing for years, right? So, everyone has heard about Single Ranch and Katie, what they were building out for 25, 30 years or something like that. Um, but so you have old Katie and then you have more of a newer Katie feel, um, lots of shops in the area, um, home to a lot of people in the oil and gas industry, um, except exceptional schools in that area. And so that's really what Katie is known for when people are relocating and oil and gas and some of the other industri industries, they hear about the Katie schools. And so they come and move over into the Katie area, the West, the Southwest area. Um, and, and that's kind of what we're known for out there. You're exactly right. When we think of Katie, we always think of the tremendous schools. Are they really that good, Keisha? Yes, <laughs> they are. And there's great schools all around the Houston and surrounding areas, but Katie does have some amazing schools as well. Well, as we are in the middle of this unusual virus event that has changed every category of our life, let's tell people about the real estate, what's happening right now in your world, how busy is it, What's going on with buyers and sellers as we're as this unique event is upon us? Well, we're definitely still selling real estate. People are always going to have a need to buy and sell real estate for multiple different reasons. Um, so the market is still moving. We have just changed how we do business. Um, we are considered essential workers. So we do we are able to continue in the buy sell process as normal. Um, so can our vendors, the title companies, inspectors, photographers. Um, again, it's just how we do the business. So a lot of our business has now gone 99 percent virtual um, where we are doing virtual listing appointments, virtual buyer consultations and even some virtual showings and open houses. A lot of agents are now starting to do video of their houses just because of the concern of the spread of COVID-19. Um, and so we are all, we still are doing showings, but only at probably about 1% of our showings are actual showings. And when we do do the showings, we are practicing proper social distances technique. Um, we have masks, we're using gloves, we have uh, foot covers, you know, the shoe covers for our shoes. 
um, hand sanitizers and bleach wipes. So we're taking all precautions because number one thing is the safety of our clients and the sellers that are allowing us to come into their homes. Well, that's right. And even when it gets to the point where people put an offer on the home, I, I know that there are home inspectors and the two that I've talked to recently are very busy. So they too have certain things that they do. And you're right. People, when we need to sell or we need to buy, we just do it. And some of these things are good practices anyway. Correct. Just good practices, good hygiene practices. Um, so I'm sure a lot of us will take these, you know, even after we've kind of come out of the stay home um, era um, into more virtual access to things. But yes, we are still buying and selling um, as normal. And in fact, we were, from a technology standpoint, it's it's true, we were already going towards it, using technology more. And those that weren't online, all of a sudden are, are really on it right now because we must, to be successful in any field, certainly real estate, we have to adapt and change. Correct. I mean, technology is even more important. And that is why I'm so thankful to be working with Carla Williams um, or at that at that brokerage because we've had a lot of tools for a long time. And, you know, over the last year, Gary's focus has been making us more of a technology company. We have our own iBuyer programs as well. So where you see other iBuyer programs kind of fizzling out, ours are still operating as normal. We're doing, we're utilizing Zoom calls. We have an amazing consumer app where you can actually, you know, I can share my consumer app with my buyers and they can, you know, do a lot of searches of homes without even leaving their home. So that's also one of the biggest pluses about working for Keller Williams. We are shifting into a technology even before this all happened. You were reading my mind before you said that I was going to say, and it's great to be working at a place like Keller Williams because prior to this, one of the staples of your company is training and staying on top and ahead of things. And also certainly trendsetters looking for trends to see where things are going and yeah, that's a great place to be. And it, it helps you, but it also helps your buyers and sellers. It absolutely does. Keller Williams is best known for all of the training. And as soon as this hit the market and then started impacting real estate, the, the, the training teams and education just completely changed and ramped up um, to make sure we were prepared. You know, in the last financial crisis, Keller Williams went in as the number four um, real estate broker across the the globe and they came out number one because they were able to make those changes and educate and prepare the agents. So that's, we're also taking that and educating and protecting and doing the right things for our sellers and buyers as well. We are talking with Keisha Johnson with Keller Williams and Keisha, there's many things you could be doing in life. Let's tell people what it was about the real estate profession that pulled you in and why you're enjoying it so much. Um, I just really like helping people one, and then absolutely helping people find, um, you know, their dream home. Real estate is a big purchase um, and even investing in real estate. And so I've just enjoyed, you know, making, helping people make their dreams come true, whether it's from a residential standpoint or from an investment standpoint. As far as the marketplace right now, the area that you're serving, again, we're describing it for those that don't know, as west of the center of Houston, it is a very exciting area. What would you tell someone that says, okay, I don't want to live inside the loop. I don't want to live in the city, but I want to live in a suburb. What is it about the Katy, Fulcher area that you think, yes, the school districts, but other than that, what are some of the superior things in the West? If you were making a case to say, you want to check the suburbs out, the West is the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think all of Houston is unique in the sense that once you're on one side of town, you have a whole world there. Um, and Katy is no different. I mean, we have lots of restaurants, local restaurants, um, franchises, lots of parks. We have anything you're looking for that you get in the loop, you can also get outside of the loop without, you know, some of the price tag of living in the city, but also um, just without all the hustle and bustle of being in the city as well. And now you may have already used that tagline, the West is the best, but if you haven't, Keisha, feel <laughs> can use it now. you can use it now. I do not expect any royalties or anything, but I think we're onto something because I don't live in Katy, but I am almost, I'm one notch from Katy right near Fry Road and I-10. And I will tell you, there's a lot of advantages, I think, of this particular suburb. 
certainly you mentioned all the things that are around it, but if I want to go west further to San mm-hmm. Antonio, mm-hmm. Fulcher, it's a straight line. And quite frankly, if I, if we all stay on I-10, we're going to eventually hit Laguna Beach. That's not so bad, but it is proximate to so many great things in Houston and even beyond. Yeah, and the, the highway, there's all, you know, you have I 10, like you mentioned, you have 99, you have the West Park. So it's also easy access to many highways to get to different areas, whether it's in the Houston area or other cities outside of Houston. You are exactly right. Keisha, let's say with the last minute, what else would you like people to know about what you're doing out there and how can we reach you? Um, just know that we are here to serve our clients. If there's, you know, people, still needing to buy or sell. We'd love an opportunity to show you why we are the top in the top 5% of the Houston agents. If you're an agent looking for a new home, I'd love an opportunity to talk to you about Keller Williams as well. Um, you can reach me at 281-766-4685. You can also reach me on Facebook or Instagram at 4809 Property Group. And the phone number again, Keisha? 281-766-4685. That sounds great. You can give Keisha a call if you want to know more about why the West is best, 281-766-4685. Keisha, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Bill. In today's litigious society, it is imperative to have the proper insurance to offset the many risks facing your business, especially if you're a real estate broker. Your errors and omissions and cyber liability insurance can help limit the threat of these risks if you know what to look for. Not sure if your insurance addresses the risks facing your business? Contact Stewart Insurance to be confident your brokerage can withstand these risks. Stewart Insurance, 866-798-2827. StewartInsurance.com. That's StewartInsurance.com or call 866-798-2827. Our guest is Kevin Baker. He is with Keller Williams. Hey, Kevin, welcome to the show. Hi, Bill. Thanks. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Well, Keller Williams, everyone knows about Keller Williams, but let's tell people the Keller Williams location that you are and where you practice your real estate profession. Sure. So I'm up here in the Woodlands, Texas, Keller Williams, the Woodlands, and that's uh, you know north of Houston if, for those out of the area, and cover pretty much you know the Woodlands, all North Houston, Spring, Tomball, Conroe, pretty much every, everything up here is uh, you know, my territory. And certainly the growth in Houston, we, we have all known that it is unbelievable in every direction, but I'm glad you mentioned that. Certainly the Woodlands is a big thing, but try to bring in for those that don't know about some of those other areas, you said Cypress and some of these other things. Let's explain some of those other su- suburbs that you're there working with buyers and su- sellers all the time. I, I've seen over the years that uh, a couple of things have driven the growth up here you know, one was uh, when they built the, the 99 Grand Parkway that really opened up as far as commuting for, for people to go to work or getting around a lot easier so they can get to uh, get over to Cypress, like you said, Katy, um, or go the other way to Kingwood. And then having everything up here now with a lot of new medical hospitals up in the Woodlands area, you really don't have to travel you know, from up here all the way to Houston you know, for those kind of services. So it's really uh, driven the growth of schools and, and uh, you know, trying to get families to, to get into, you know, new houses, really a lot, lot more going on last few years. Well, let's give people an idea as far as what, certainly we want to be close to where we live, but what drives yeah. someone say to, to go to Magnolia, the Woodlands, what are some of the features of each one? I, I know the Woodlands is just super as far as the trees, it has all the great amenities, but we're hearing more about Magnolia, Tomball, Cypress, and these things. What what are some of the drivers there in, in your? Yeah, so so one big factor is you know the schools are excellent in uh, all these areas, Tomball, Magnolia. Some of the other features you can get uh, you know some really nice new newer built houses that have been you know built up the last few years. Just like the woodlands, you know, there's a lot lot more nature. You know, a little more quiet, more of a community. Uh, atmosphere so they're trying to you know have just a community within the area so you can have you know your local shopping little park pools everything just right there so as far as having to run around town everything is just right there so i think that's that's been a a really big growth and then just really as far as what's being built out there just just a lot of options from you know from an entry first-time buyer all the way up to somebody who wants a luxury you know home on you know a couple acres and i'm thinking that 
especially with this virus event upon us. We see how it's affected very densely populated places like New York City. I'm guessing psychologically that there will be that this will be a driver for people to go those that aren't already in the suburbs. I could be wrong, but I think it could be a driver for people to leave city type areas and go to the suburbs and maybe even go to places where there's acreage. One, how do you feel about that? And it sounds yeah. like it sounds like you're in a place where the, those that aren't there yet might be on the way. Yeah, I, I've actually seen that and even before all this started where a lot of people just want a little more space, a little more quiet, spend time with their family or if they have dogs, get away from the, the you know, the urban environment where it's a little more noisy or a little more hectic. And I, I, I could see that growth growing because, you know, you're, if you, like we're doing now, we're spending a lot of time in our house and we're thinking about, well, I wish I had a little, little more, you know, backyard just to sit out or I wish it was a little, you know, quieter. So I think that's going to be a, a, a driver for people maybe thinking, you know, for their family, their kids, or even maybe retirement to kind of be somewhere where they can just relax and, you know, have peace of mind. As we're in this virus event, what are some of the things you're doing with buyers and sellers now that you have adjusted how you're practicing real estate and, of course, your your whole company? But what are some of the things that if someone's out there, yeah, they're in the woodlands right now and they hear you and they're saying, man, you know, I was thinking about buying or selling my home. What are some of the things they could expect as sellers if you were to call upon them and, and offer your services to sell their homes? What should they consider now? So one thing is um, having a really awesome online presence and, and just really robust marketing. And that's something I've had in place for a while and ramped it up over the you know the past month or so with uh, virtual showings, 3D modeling of, of the property. So actually I can have a buyer come to one of my listings and just go through as if they were walking through it. Um, I know a lot of like, you know, the museums have those kind of technology where right. you can click through, walk through, maybe click on a um, a feature of the house and it gives a little more detail as far as what that is a way for someone to do a walk, walk through you know a showing without actually being in the property i've also done this over the years too is uh for some buyers a facetime you know a, a virtual showing so they may be they're out of state i can walk through the house they can see everything ask questions they don't have to travel here be you know together so that's a really great experience and then maybe they can narrow it down and then we have you know one or two favorites then that's when you can okay you know now let's coordinate to, to see it but that, that's more of a peace of mind for both the seller and the buyer right now there's still a lot of good activity i see that buyers that are out there are you know extremely serious right now and that's that's what i was the next thing i was going to say is that yeah. if i'm a buyer and i call you up and say hey kevin baker with keller williams I would like to buy a property, and I know this virus thing's here. What should how how are we going to go through that process, and what should I expect as a buyer if if we're going to work with you? you know, we hear a lot about the Zoom, you know, online meetings. I can do a virtual consultation with the, with the the buyer, get things set up as far as okay, what's going to be the process, cash, pre approval, timing, what you're what are you looking for, really really ask the right questions, and then make sure you know you. A big thing with with my process is communication. So making sure, okay, you know, we have everything lined up. So we're not going to be inefficient. We're going to be very efficient and you know get everything lined up exactly what you need. That's a good point. The word efficient. I think this moves the process perhaps to a a, mo a more efficient way. But if I'm the buyer and I say, okay, Kevin, I'm going to look at it virtually. I'm going to be on the internet and all those things, but there's going to be a point where I'm going to say, I want to see that I want to walk through the property. We can still do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I actually have done it over this past weekend with a, a, a buyer. It's, you know, it's a little more set up, but what I do right now is, you know, okay, I'll, you know, clean the doorknobs, open the door, have the buyers come in separately from me. I'll be outside. They walk through with the understanding, you know, just not to really touch anything, but uh, you know, they have, I provide some, you know, gloves and, and a, a mask and that they feel a little more safe doing that. And then um, it, just a little more, you know, thought goes into the process of you know, how, to, how to do it the safest way possible. That way, you know, the buyer, you know, can actually get out there, experience it. And um, about the same level of uh, interest, you know, right now, but just more serious buyers. 
like you said, there's a pro- there's a new process that's new in place. process. Yeah, so it's a little you know you have to think think more ahead. And there are some sellers which you know if they're occupied properties, they may not want to have the in person showing at this time. So you know we can kind of coordinate, reschedule it, or to do maybe you know a, a FaceTime showing or give them some head you know heads up. So okay, you know you, they'll be out of the house for the day and then shorter showing versus the you know the old older you know maybe 40 minutes an hour in the house maybe it'll be 10 minutes but it's still available to to do the showings and before we close out the segment kevin what else would you like people to know this whole virus thing is it's got a lot of people thinking more about local community and that's something i've always been a part of Uh, i've been a big supporter of the the meals on wheels montgomery county and uh you know, something I help organize a fundraising race at B50 Brewery in Conroe. And, you know, that's something we should always think about is like how to support our local community. That's right. So I, Meals on Wheels and then right now, especially helping feed the seniors. So that's that's really how I like to give back. And then also with um, I'm a, also an advocate of the shelter dogs and rescues. So that's another thing I try to find dog, dog homes for dogs. It'll uh interest of mine. So I think just giving back and then thinking about, okay, how, how can you support a local business, a smaller business, a little tougher now for the smaller businesses out there. So, you know, we want to think about how you can help them and, you know, maybe they can help you in return. And Kevin, how can people reach out to you? Yeah. So the best way would be either uh, to call me up at 713-417-7907, or if you go to the website, kevinbakerhomes.com. KevinBakerHomes.com. And of course, give Kevin a call at 713-417-7907. Kevin, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thanks, Bill. If you're a real estate professional, then listen closely. Cyber criminals are targeting our industry. They are impersonating real estate professionals, home buyers, sellers, and title agents. Their goal is to gain access to your inboxes, computers, and clients so they can steal information and funds. Does your business insurance offset these risks? Not sure? Contact Stewart Insurance to determine if your business is properly insured. Visit stewartinsurance.com or call 866-798-2827. Visit stewartinsurance.com or call 866-798-2827. Our guest is Dan Munson with Sente Mortgage. Hey, Dan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bill. It's good to be here, as always. And we always love to talk money and find out what's going on in the money world. But first, you're with Sente Mortgage. Let's tell people a little bit about your company. I appreciate the opportunity. Sente was founded in 2007 by a group of mortgage bankers who wanted to get away from basically the, the bean counters, no offense to accountants. And, uh, and and just run the money, the, the company that we want to, which is taking care of customers. Because my life is easier if my customers' lives are easier. What makes it kind of stand out is we a lot of companies have operations on one side, sales on the other. We just have us. And n- no amount of sales results will keep a prima donna here. You've got to be professional. You've got to be a team player. And you've got to uh, care about other people. Well, and it sounds like you're streamlining the process, too, by keeping that relationship at the forefront, and especially when we're talking about buying a home or even commercial transactions, but buying a home is such an emotional thing, and now with this virus event upon us, it is even more amplified. It is, and just a little inside baseball, the the people inside our company, if you are not professional, if you are not caring about your team, then it really uh, messes up the system for everybody. Because how can I take care of Bill's loan if I've got people running around here screaming and shouting? So, yeah, there's a virus going on. Yeah, there's a lot of volatility. But let's all keep our heads and we'll look for a solution. So tell us, as we are in this virus event, what are some of the other things, how it's changing the loan process, Dan, or, or what people should expect right now. Let's say they want to, if they're going to buy a home in, I don't know, a month from now, they should really start right now and get in contact with you. What are some of the things we should be thinking about now? I always like people getting in contact early because most consumers don't realize that we do things in our lives every day that make total sense that might be a red flag for an underwriter. So let's get out in front of that. Let's get your paperwork in, get your application, make sure there's nothing I can do to help you to get a better rate or a better situation. 
as far as what's going on now with COVID, unfortunately, if you've been furloughed, then you can't buy a house right now. We can get you ready for when you come off furlough. But I've had one or two people who during the process got furloughed and unfortunately weren't a- unable to close on refinances. Well, that's a big thing. And, and of course, is the difference between being furloughed, being laid off. Correct. And what we're seeing is if you're laid off or just flat out let go, yes, you're, you're looking for a whole new job, but we'll work with you to get, make sure everything else is ready. Those people who are furloughed, they're, they've been told they're coming back. Uh, so it's just a matter of time. And once they get back, we need a paycheck stub or two, and then they're buying a house. It makes me think that, let's say, maybe the worst case scenario, let's say I am let go from a company, right? And mm-hmm. and I'm fine. I have a place to live. I have reserve funds in order. And eh, maybe I find a, my new position in a month from my previous position. So that month, what happens when I want to go for a loan and I have, say, a lot of employment un- under my belt, maybe a month gap, and then I'm with my new company? Can I still get a loan, or are there other considerations? That's a great question. As long as you're being paid in a similar fashion, so we'd, we'd want to say W-2, and if you've always been commissioned, that you're in commission now, you, you've always been salaried, you're salaried now. So as long as it's a similar situation, then you should not have any problems. Or it could be a situation where I get better pay and better compensation. Well, we all like that. Yeah, there you, there, you, there you go. We are optimists on this show, and and I think that's a healthy thing to be. But the fact is we're in a new world right now, so we do need to be nimble and think about the different things that can happen and and continue to go forth, right? Yes, sir. We are, and we're working to help people solve those problems. And, uh, there is a lot of volatility out there. I know Chase over the weekend came out with uh, more stringent guidelines. Uh, I read about it in CNBC. However, Chase is also overrun with refinances. So I think what they're doing now is saying, if we can't handle what we've got, then let's cherry pick. Not everybody out there is cherry picking. There's a whole lot of companies out there who are willing and able to help right now, regardless of the situation. That's a good. What about refinancing right now with your company? Well, I welcome it. Uh, um, Right now, the rates are really good. They've been coming down a little bit in the last week or so. We're getting refinances done within 35 to 45 days. And we just, the, the, yeah, thank you. The, The most important thing to me is let's really work the numbers. Let's see what makes sense because I'm not the only one who should benefit from your refinance. Oh, and Bill, one of the things I saw a lot of last week was people paying a ridiculous number of points to get their rate down. Uh, I saw a guy who was going to spend $3,500 in points to rate, drop his payment another 10 bucks a month. Mm. So after 29 and a half years, he'd break even on that deal. The, the, the big part of, ref, of refinancing and mortgages and interest rates, it's a math thing. If you're not good at math, make sure you have the right guy like Dan Munson, right? He'll help you with the math. <laughs> oh, Lord, my math teachers from high school are not going to want to hear that. But yes, <laughs> as long as it's not calculus. So, okay. The other thing, you know, Sente Mortgage, I always like to reference the name Sente. First time I heard about Sente, I thought, well, what does, where did the name come from? Is that a person's name? Let's tell people about the origin and why you're called Sente Mortgage. I think it's great. Well, I appreciate it. There's a game called Go that you and I as kids played, we, uh, a lighter version called Othello. And if you are going to win, Bill knows he's going to beat Dan. He just doesn't know if it's going to take five minutes or five hours, but Bill's going to win. Then you are in a position of sente where you know you're going to win and everything's going to go your way. And that's what we really try to push our people to as far as sending out information, letting them know what's going on out there in the, in the uh, credit world, in the financial world. And I've got a database of clients, you know, 2,500 people who get a little note every month and some of them would find it very helpful, but we want people to know they're going to win. Well, you have the perfect tagline. I'm sure you may have used it, and that is Dan is helping people in a position, getting in the position where they're going to win when it comes to their home mortgage, right? I like it. 
<laughs> there you go. I'll be your I'll, I'll be your guy. So in the meantime, also Christina Sacco, I say stay close to your Stewart Title Business Development Officer, and we know Christina. You and Christina work together. She is incredible, but together you're doing tremendous work there to help people in the real estate profession. I appreciate that. She is tremendous, and her team um, actually bought a house last month, and they took care of it for me. And her her team is just wonderful. So she does. It's not just uh, Christina up front. She, she's really backed up by great folks. There's no question. We have the A-plus team of support at Stewart Title and all our locations. And, Dan, let's say with the last minute in this segment, what else would you like people to know? And let's tell them how they can reach out to you. Sure. The website is pretty easy. It's mortgagedan.com. And my phone number is 713-480-1061. I think the big thing, Bill, is that if folks have questions, ask them. You're not going to hurt or hurt someone's feelings in the mortgage business by asking a question, by saying you have a concern, by saying something doesn't sound right. Raise those questions. This, this is a really big decision. You need to feel comfortable with it. That's right. Dan, let's tell them the phone number again and your website is? It's cheesy because it's and easy to remember, mortgagedan.com. And the phone number is 713-480-1061. MortgageDan.com, putting you in the winning position. Right, Dan? That's good. You're writing my material. There you go. We'll put some music behind that. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan (laughs) Munson with Sente Mortgage. Thank you, Dan. In today's litigious society, it is imperative to have the proper insurance to offset the many risks facing your business, especially if you're a real estate broker. Your errors and omissions and cyber liability insurance can help limit the threat of these risks if you know what to look for. Not sure if your insurance addresses the risks facing your business. Contact Stewart Insurance to be confident your brokerage can withstand these risks. Stewart Insurance, 866-798-2827. StewartInsurance.com. That's StewartInsurance.com or call 866-798-2827. I say it all the time at Stewart Title. We have many distinctions to help our customers and potential customers. Cybersecurity and safety is so important to all of us for our associates and for our customers. We have a very unique distinction. He is with us today and now our Chief Information Security Officer, Gennady Vishnevetsky. Gennady, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bill. Glad to be there. It is awesome to have you here on the show. Let's tell people some of the things that you're doing right now as we are in this virus event that's going on for everybody. Work from home directive created havoc for both users and IT professionals. IT didn't have enough time to evaluate the tools and access you will need when you send to work from home. Many organizations discovered that some resources are just not available from outside of their walls, and even though virtual private networks. Similarly, Employees found themselves scrambling for the right equipment. Even users who had laptops and those were portable found themselves missing a corporate scanners on the floor above or shared printer on the floor below. Security is no different and going through its own set of challenges. The biggest one, rebaselining what is new normal. The fundamental principle of a security operations center, which is the primary monitoring center for security events, alerts, and incidents, is baseline what the normal looks like. Then any deviations from normal behavior gets examined. The first day mass of users went home, our cyber security operations center lit up like a Christmas tree because users' location, behavior, and pattern have changed. The new time needed for this transition and rebaselining is critical for any security team as we need to ensure no malicious actor sleeps under the radar. The second most significant threat is our users. They become more vulnerable. We are disconnected, despaired, and stressed. Whatever is in the news transposes to efficient emails. It is easier than ever for criminals to create the fear and uncertainty. Outside of phishing, the second biggest attack vector is fake tech support. Remember, many users are no longer take a flight of stairs to see their IT guy. Employees should scrutinize any calls claiming to be from corporate IT. Hang up and call the number your company lists for your IT team. And you were talking about malicious actors. We know that there are people out there trying to breach security, get our information. You also mentioned phishing. Just in case there are a few people out there that don't know what phishing is, give us a quick word on that, please. 
Sure. Phishing is traditionally an email attack where perpetrator is trying to steer their victim to either a uh, click on malicious link or download a malicious attachment. The email is crafted in a special way that the recipient would recognize it as a trusted. The attacker will either portray as someone who is the user knows or have some other attributes that will make it familiar. It happened to me just the other day. I got an email from, it looked like Amazon, saying that they're going to shut my account down if I didn't respond, but it was on a different email than I have my Amazon account, so I was totally alerted. But I also thought, wow, it's pretty convincing when they make that urgency say that we're going to shut you off if you don't do this. So it's they're pretty tricky, huh? Yeah, it is a perfect example, and this is one of the tricks that uh, um, malicious criminals are using is the sense of urgency. Um, and you brought an interesting point. Um, so there, there are some services who are actually will communicate with the users over email. Most of them will not. And just as a good rule of thumb, uh, don't ever click on the link. So even if you receive the email from Amazon stating something, your package will be delayed or your charge is mis- misappropriated or there, is other, there are other problems, don't respond to that email. Um, open your Amazon application if you have it on your mobile phone or go directly to Amazon website. If there is a problem with your account, you will see it as the minute you log in. And of course, more people are working from home, doing their jobs at home. Give us a few tips about what we should think about when we are now working at home, especially those that haven't done so before. First of all, uh, play by your organization rules. Nobody likes Wild West, especially IT and security. Do you have a tool that you need to do your work? Ask your IT first before you sign up for what is popular on the Facebook or your neighbor uses. Uh, what about your work phone? Many modern phone switches support an application-based calling. You can install a phone application on your computer and have your office phone at your fingertips. If not, you can always forward your office phone to your mobile or home telephone number, even remotely. Don't move data unless permitted. Check with your IT, HR, and especially a legal department to see what you can store in the cloud services, for example, Dropbox. You're still liable for a privacy and safeguard of your customer's data. Make sure the sensitive information is stored and disposed appropriately. And then when we think about cybersecurity at home, here we are, a lot of us that have been working in the office, now we're at home. It seems like we might feel more comfortable and more secure when we are at our offices in our office building. But now we're at home. I would think that the cyber bad actors, the bad guys out there, we might be more vulnerable at home. You think that's true? Yes, it's absolutely. Um, we're more vulnerable, and it's it's more than ever. We need to have a proper setup for a home office. It doesn't have to be fancy, but needs to have no wake zone. Set up the boundary with the family and members and the pets. Share space and responsibility, and most importantly, set the schedule. Uh, we take a lot of things for granted. When we're in the office, we mingle, uh, we visit people and stop in the hallway and chat as we go to a coffee room. We take breaks, and we'll have people popping into our offices and cubicles. Uh, we're disconnected and missing all these interruptions at home. So set the schedule and take the breaks. Establish the routine just like you had at work. There are some other home tips first. Headphones makes a difference. Laptop speakerphones is not suitable for privacy and voice quality. Sharing space with a spouse or kids, invest in noise canceling headphones. They're making miracles. A good camera is essential for video calls. Laptop cameras are not great. Invest in better or use your phone for video conferencing. Keep the camera at the eye level. Lighting is critical. Want to be a pro? Go to your favorite social media channel and watch self-made video. You'll learn quickly what not to do. Reuse your old tech. You can use old phone or a tablet solely for video conferencing or view learning material on the internet. You'll need a reliable and secure Wi-Fi. Most modern laptops no longer have a network port. I know Starbucks closed. It's still not a good idea to use neighbor's free Wi-Fi. You never know who is behind that freebie. You might need a more or better internet bandwidth. I'm great if needed. Don't forget about alarms cap. If you're not bundling your services, your internet bandwidth capped at one terabyte and overage may apply. I sure hope ISP will move uh, will more forgiving during the harsh times. 
Depending on the size of your home office, you might see more traffic and less elbow space. Accidents are unavoidable in a cramped environment. Make sure you have a backup plan. Don't leave your computer unattended. Lock your screen. You don't want your kid to send email to your boss while you're snacking in the kitchen. Yeah, that goes back to the idea of having that no wake zone when it comes. Some people have young children at home. Myself, I have two dogs, and they they behave pretty good, Gennady. But every once in a while, they may bark when I'm on a conference call. So I I try to take care of that as I can. Those are some great ideas. The other thing I was thinking about as you're talking about our internet providers as we're, we might have more time to think about what's going on in our setup and things, I think it's periodically good to check with those uh, Internet providers to see maybe they have more power available in our, in our given area or maybe they have a special plan where we can get more for uh, maybe a bargain. Yeah, that's a good point. A lot of service providers are now offering lucrative upgrades considering that we all stay and work from home. The other things I want to add is, uh, so when you're checking your allowance, uh, make sure you actually check your billing dates because your allowance, the ter- one terabyte allowance, if you're not bundling the services, it goes from your beginning to the end of your billing cycle, which is not necessarily will be a beginning of an, an end of any given month. That sounds great. Any other things we should know as we're upon in this pandemic and the being more careful and have more precautions to take? So every day, every day we live, we wake up and go to bed with the news. So with the news, go to the source. Go to well, uh, WHO, CDC, Job Hopkins, John Hopkins Research Center for your daily updates. Hacker will use scare tactics, for example, increase infection in your area or your school has a first confirmed coronavirus. Go with your guts and stay resilient to phishing attacks. There is no vaccination and it won't be for a while. Don't get scammed. Save your money for something better. Test kits are not available on Amazon, no matter what they say. Stimulus package scams are way ahead of government payments. Be on the lookout for a fraud. A number of phishing emails and compromised website is exceeding the infection. Don't fool some cyber criminals. Want to donate? Pick the reputable charity. You might need to be an IT guy or a gal for a bit. Check with your IT department if you need to do anything on your computer. For example, install security patch or update software or update your antivirus. Be cyber smart and stay healthy. Thank you so much, Gennady. And I want to also say, as I mentioned, stay close to your Stuart Title Business Development Officer periodically. I know you're going to be doing some seminars online with people and We'll make sure we tell people about that as things progress. But once again, go to Stuart.com. There's great information there. And Gennady, thank you so so much for helping us all out today. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. In today's litigious society, it is imperative to have the proper insurance to offset the many risks facing your business, especially if you're a real estate broker. Your errors and omissions and cyber liability insurance can help limit the threat of these risks if you know what to look for. Not sure if your insurance addresses the risks facing your business? Contact Stewart Insurance to be confident your brokerage can withstand these risks. Stewart Insurance, 866-798-2827. StewartInsurance.com. That's StewartInsurance.com or call 866-798-2827. If you're a real estate professional, then listen closely. Cyber criminals are targeting our industry. They are impersonating real estate professionals, home buyers, sellers, and title agents. Their goal is to gain access to your inboxes, computers, and clients so they can steal information and funds. Does your business insurance offset these risks? Not sure? Contact Stewart Insurance to determine if your business is properly insured. Visit StewartInsurance.com or call 866-798-2827. Visit StewartInsurance.com or call 866-798-2827. Real Estate Matters would not be possible without our partner, Stewart Insurance. With a focus in real estate and a special focus on real estate brokers, Stewart Insurance creates insurance plans to address the risks facing our industry today. They invest a significant amount of time helping real estate broker owners offset and manage their risk. And now, we always love when John Bramlett with Stewart Insurance is on with us. John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Bill. Always a pleasure to be here and be with you. Here we go. The show continues. Always some great information you bring forth. What would you like to tell us today? Well, I appreciate that, Bill. Uh, Today, 
I think I'd like to talk about keys for our real estate broker partners to consider when they're looking at uh, business insurance and their business insurance partners. Well, there's really kind of a couple of things that we need to look at in general before we get into some of the specifics. There's really two areas uh, to consider. Ways to mitigate risks or minimize the risk. For example, if you were to, uh, to activate a dual authentic authentication uh, email program or process. And then the other would be offset risk with you do that with insurance. So the question really comes into how much risk are you willing to hold versus how much risk you wish to re you wish to place on the insurance partner. That's right. And that's a balance that we always should be mindful of. Absolutely. That truly is. And I think that that leads us to kind of the first consideration uh, when you're looking at your you know current business insurance plans or potential business insurance plans and the partners that would hold those plans that would underwrite those plans and the first consideration is make sure that you have an insurance partner that you have confidence in and then with that insurance partner that you have confidence in conduct an annual review so take the time make the time to go over your policies uh, to make sure that everything it's in line is aligned with your current uh, business needs and that kind of follows into the second point you know things change um, as we move along from year to year and that's the importance of having that conversation with your insurance advisor you know have you increased the number of employees um, has your revenue increased uh, have you changed or added the types of business activities that you conduct um, has there been an increase or a decrease in the risks that you see and that you take, you know, those are all considerations uh, that we need to look at on an, an annual basis. Um, another thing to take a look at is your deductible. If you remember now, the deductible is the money you pay before the insurance coverage kicks in. So a higher deductible must take on a higher financial burden. So if you do a higher deductible in hopes of having a lower premium, you're going to have a higher financial burden before the insurance kicks in. A lower deductible may mean a higher premium, not always, but it may mean a higher premium. So it's always important to compare the deductible with the premiums and understanding how much risk, again, you wish to take on versus how much risk you would like the insurance company to take on. That's right. Another ba Balance is so important. Balance is always important. Does the plan offer coverage specific to your industry? Is this just a general plan or is it one specific? So, for example, when we work with our real estate broker partners, our insurance company partners specialize in real estate coverage. They specialize in real estate coverage for errors and omission or cyber liability or workers' compensation, general liability. So they are all specialists in those areas. So that's important to take a look at. Consider some of the fringe benefits from an insurance company that might be around. Um, some of these insurance partners offer some really fantastic training. They offer um, some customer service aspects of it. Are, you know, are they rated highly in their customer service aspect? Do they have toll-free numbers? Do they have chat offerings? Is your in, does your insurance partner provide some additional services and coverage uh, or support that can help you during your coverage period? The ability to reduce a quote if you take actions to reduce risk. So do you have an opportunity to potentially reduce uh, what that premium is if you do some things proactively? Uh, like, do you have a buyer or seller acknowledgement? Do you utilize that buyer or seller acknowledgement form? Uh, do you utilize state approved contracts? Uh, those kinds of things uh, potentially can help you reduce um, that premium. And then finally, find an insurance partner that specializes in your area of need. So, for example, if you're looking to add or change your errors and emissions, um, look for a partner that fits and meets your needs. We have some insurance partners that we work with that for real estate brokers, errors and emissions for the smaller companies under a million in revenue, under 50 in employees, they are really, really strong. But when you get up to those bigger brokers, they're not so strong. So it's having an insurance partner and an insurance advisor that understands uh, which partner is strong where and, and helping you match those or make those connections. 
And certainly I want to bring forth at this time that people, when they want to work with you and for you to determine their needs along with them to find, as we say, that balance, one of the beauties is that they can call you on the phone and talk with yourself or someone about tailoring the insurance needs, whether they're a broker or an individual. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you're a, a real estate broker, you will visit with me or a member of our team. Uh, if you're an individual that's looking for some homeowner's insurance or auto insurance, or if you'd like to requote, if you're going through a, a refi right now and you'd like to look at your insurance partner, our personal lines team is, is there to help. And you can uh, reach us at 866-798-2827, 866-798-2827. Or email us at stewartinsurance at stewart.com. That's stewartinsurance at stewart.com. Or see us online at stewartinsurance.com. And before we close this segment, John, what else would you like people to know? Well, again, Bill, it's, uh, you know, we're all going through some challenging times right now, but this might provide an opportunity to take a look at your uh, total insurance policy and insurance plans, uh, get an understanding of what your coverage is. Uh, are there areas that have changed in your business? And let's take a look at it because uh, we still need to make, make sure that we're protecting uh, the assets that we have. And like you said, there, what another key word in this is change. And even without this virus event, we know that things change all the time. The Stewart Insurance Annual Review and sometimes maybe biannual review is so important. You guys are doing incredible work. I know they want to call you at 866 866- Seven nine eight two eight two seven eight six six seven nine eight two eight two seven. Thank you so much, John Bramlett. You have been listening to Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title. I am your host, Bill Nampick, along with Roseanne Rogers, our sales manager, John Bramlett, Tom Carpentier, president of Stuart Insurance. We also want to thank Christina Sacco for bringing on Dan with Sente, Rochelle Sula for Keisha at Keller Williams, and of course, Becky Shannon House doing incredible work. Our Stewart Title Business Development Officers are there all the time. Becky brought us Kevin Baker with Keller Williams. So thank you all for listening to Real Estate Matters with Stewart Title. Stewart.com forward slash Houston to hear any and all the shows. Once again, that's Stewart.com forward slash Houston. And until next week, thank you so much for listening. And once again, thank you, John. You're welcome, Bill. Take care. In today's litigious society, it is imperative to have the proper insurance to offset the many risks facing your business, especially if you're a real estate broker. Your errors and omissions and cyber liability insurance can help limit the threat of these risks if you know what to look for. Not sure if your insurance addresses the risks facing your business. Contact Stewart Insurance to be confident your brokerage can withstand these risks. Stewart Insurance, 866-798-2827. StewartInsurance.com. That's StewartInsurance.com or call 866-798-2827. If you're a real estate professional, then listen closely. Cyber criminals are targeting our industry. They are impersonating real estate professionals, home buyers, sellers, and title agents. Their goal is to gain access to your inboxes, computers, and clients so they can steal information and funds. Does your business insurance offset these risks? Not sure? Contact Stewart Insurance to determine if your business is properly insured. Visit StewartInsurance.com or call 866-798-2827.